Hi guys, welcome to another edition of All Things Football. Today I've got a special guest. He's a former professional footballer um, in South Africa and he got senior call-ups to the national team as well. Uh, a very warm welcome to Shoei Baltos. Hey, shukran for having me. Yes, um, you guys don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram where you can catch the rest of this video. Um, Shoei, just to start off, you grew up in Mowbray, which is not far from where I used to work and also stayed. Um, tell us about how you got into football, your journey, um, where it began. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna maybe just state it out there now that I never actually grew up in Mowbray. I was born in Mowbray Maternity Home. Oh, okay. And many people and many journalists and everybody that, 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 uh, we do, I do interviews with will always say you grew up in, in Mowbray and I always have to, uh, <laughs> no actually I grew up in Weinberg okay. and in Grassy Park but I was born yeah, in Mowbray uh, Mowbray maternity home so I'm actually a Weinberg boy and literally about 5-10 minutes walk from Cape District um, my, my journey of, with football was, it was just in the family uh, from my mother's side uh, all my uncles played football one of my uncles was fortunate enough to get an opportunity to play professional um, back in the early 80s, but yeah, he, he turned it down and he he decided to go the academic way. Um, but yes, we, we've, we've got a lot of footballers. Um, I think there was a few of my cousins that probably, uh, if I look at it, a whole lot more talented than what I was. Um, and we've always just been a very sportive side with my, with my mother's side. Um, my father's side it was sporty, but they went more more into the rugby, which um, coincidentally my son is uh, leaning towards more is, is the rugby side. Yeah, so and yeah, and then I was playing for basically for Blue Bells, um, that plays uh, out of Cape District, and I was just playing amateur football, and I was an infield player um, up until the age of sixteen. And I was given an opportunity to play to play goalkeeper for uh, Bluebells in our senior team. Uh, it was our, we used to call it the Premier Division, and I started enjoying it. And um, yeah, I, luckily for me was that I I got to shoot out a little bit. So I wasn't I wasn't always this tall, and I wasn't a tall um, young youngster. I mean, I was an average average height. Yes. And yeah, grade 11, grade 12, I, for us it's standard 10 because I remember I was still the last of the standard 10. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and then I think maybe two, three years after that, um, the grade started. Yes. Yeah, and and then um, uh, yeah, my uncle organized uh, with Booby Solomons because my uncle's uh, the imam at um, uh, Fifth Avenue Mosque in Grassy Park. Okay, Imam Ali. okay. Yeah. yeah, that's my mother's brother. Oh, wow. Okay, small. <laughs> and, yeah, and he actually, um, and Pupi was obviously coming uh, a regular at the mosque in Fifth Avenue. And he spoke to Pupi and he just said, look, it's an opportunity. And Pupi at the moment, at that time, was at, at Santos. Santos, um, yeah. yeah. I think he was assistant coach to Gordon Egerson, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, that's that's where I felt that you know, okay, there's an opportunity. There's people that thought I was quite good, and um, and then I had a stint with Milano FC, and they were playing in the Vodacom League at that time, which I think it's called now the Mozzepe League. Um, and I also managed to play with him in the Bale tournament. Um, it was still out in in in. Stramfontein, uh, Mitchell's Plain area. It was out at the Stephen Regan grounds. Uh, we are obviously it's now in in Bal uh, and it's called the Metropolitan Cup. Yeah. And yeah, um, I got an opportunity with with Santos in the develop. Um, they used to call it the development team because they didn't have MDC at it's that time. At so that stage. They, yeah, so um, Kulam Ali had a, a team called Newtons, and they were playing in the Vela League, uh, not in Vela League, the National First Division, but. Um, in that era, uh, we it was uh, the coastal and the inland stream, and we were playing and we played in the coastal league. And unfortunately, uh, we got relegated. Uh, but I played quite a lot of games. The head coach at 
time was uh, Mark Harrison, he's a British guy. And um, yeah, he uh, decided, you know, to and give me an opportunity. He contacted a few clubs in Europe and an opportunity to play, uh, to go on town. And I, I wasn't really prepared um, technically because was, uh, obviously I was an infield player and at yes. amateur club level up until now, there's not really goalkeeper specifics um, yes. and, you know, to improve uh, goalkeeping. And yeah, the opportunity uh, it was just um, it was a good experience, but I, I could say I just wasn't ready. And I mean, I was about 21 years old at the time. And then um, there was a time in, in, in my career, short career, that I actually maybe thought of um, uh, not pursuing it because I, I was quite disappointed and um, devastated actually to a certain degree when, when I never made it to the, to the final um, squad of the under-23 national team. And it was quite devastating for me, and um, I decided just to you know to to work and to play football in the yeah. highest level that I possibly could. And um, I was given an opportunity at times to play uh, in in the Vodacom League then. And we played. I played with. I played at, at Clyde Partners for three years. We won the league. We went to the national playoffs for first division. And we lost uh, in the final game. We actually just needed a draw um, to get into the to the NFD, and um, and then I felt, and then I was told, you know what, Vodacom is a little uh, you you better than the Vodacom. Um, and Vasco came, and Vasco asked you want to come and play in the first division, and I said, you know, this, yeah. I mean, I was working for 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 Nashua as a as a photocopier and fax technician yes. at yes. that time. Uh, about four years already and I said you know what yeah I can um, let me give it a shot again and we did very well um, at Vasco uh, in that first division we went to the playoffs we uh, we beat uh, pushbacks and then we had Benoni Premier uh, we had to just play them home and away and we drew in Johannesburg no score and then we lost in, in Cape Town where we missed out on, on getting uh, into the PSL which was also quite devastating. But the positive thing was, was the games was televised and yeah, Bloemfontein and Celtics obviously um, showed some interest and they were you know, quite keen on signing and there was an opportunity, but um, I was, you know, quite comfortable and happy with playing first division football and working. Um, I knew at that time that, you know, football wasn't a long career and, um, you know, sometimes you, you overthink things. Yes. It was a stage where I thought, you know, uh, what if the club doesn't want to, you know, they signed a three-year contract. What if they don't want me after three years? What am I going to do as a 26-year-old man? Um, yes. I've only got uh, matric, I've got, yeah, and I've got some experience, you know, in photocopiers and, and um, yeah, faxes. So there was a lot that was going on at that time. And, yeah, or my mother, you know, you you always go and seek some advice, but it just swung the way of, you know, think about what could, can happen. And at that time, I had an agent, um, Rustam Simons, he's a very close friend of mine still. And he also, because I would ask him, okay, so what happens if I don't get another contract? And, and he would say, but what happens if you do get another contract? And I said, but what if I get injured? And he will say, yes, but what if you don't get injured? And yeah. So there was a lot of, fortunately, there was a lot of people that um, had confidence in me. Maybe not the confidence that I had in myself, going all the way. And yeah, then I, uh, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I said, look, uh, let me think about it. And then Rastam said, okay, uh, and Celtics and the owners, they said, they'll even fly you up. You can go and spend a week in there. And I remember we on... Mango, and we're pulling into, and we're pulling into Blue Fontaine, and you know when you when you're pulling when you just you know in the decent, and you just see brown because this is <laughs> the beginning of June or middle of June, and it's yeah. just brown everywhere. It's not even houses, 
and you pull into the airport and you get off the plane and, and it's, I promise you it's probably about two or three degrees and I'm like, <laughs> I don't, I can't do this. And then he said, you're not be here, let's meet the owners, whatever. Okay, meet the owners, they take me around, they showed me the mall, and I said, is this it? And they said, yeah, this is all we got, this is it's a waterfront. <laughs> waterfront? He said, oh, we're going to go have lunch at the waterfront mall. I said, okay. We pull up the waterfront and it's literally <laughs> about a quarter of the size of our waterfront. And there's a little bit of like a small little dam in the middle. Okay. And, um, and Sunday evening I got home. Monday we decided with, with the rest of them. I said, okay, not, let's give it a shot. And yeah, for me, the rest is history. And then from there, I just you know, set myself the short-term goals, longer goals, uh, and and that's how I just continued with, with throughout my career. Um, I wanted to ask, so you, you played for specifically three clubs that uh, it was quite, um, where you had a, a good stint, I would say, um, and you were well known in that time. It was Celtic, it was Maddotsburg, and then it was Cape Town City. How would you say the three, um, the different three clubs were to you and your career as such? Yeah, Bloemfontein, um, again, I'm going to go back. I was there for two weeks. And <laughs> I I would lift the blanket up in the morning and, and you could literally <laughs> see the own mist. And do this like, yes, yes. And you, just, and you see that. And, and <laughs> I would go outside on the balcony because um, like two two. Flats away was was one of the teammates uh, and a very good friend of mine still up until today is Gary Goldstone. And um, we would meet outside for breakfast. I'll have my cereal of oats and he'll have his whatever cornflakes. And at the one day it was just snowing. And I just looked at him and he's smiling at me because he's been there for like two years. And it was literally snowing. And I just I got back in into the house. And I called my mother, this is two weeks later, and I called my mother and I said, no, no I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and she said, okay, what happened? I said, no, no, it just started snowing. Yeah, yeah. And she said, is that it? And I said, no. Besides the fact that I'm, I'm the only colored and I look like an Indian, <laughs> um, everybody's speaking Sutu. Uh, I don't understand what they're saying. Yeah. I'm struggling to fit in with my team. I'm calling players as names that is not even their real names. That players have left the club already. <laughs> um, I don't know anything because I wasn't a PSL football follower. Yes. Pre-signing yes. a PSL con. So I was extremely naive and I said, I'm yes. done. And just, okay, you know what? Just go, go to training and call me again this evening. And I called again and she said, are you still feeling? So I said, yes. She said, okay. Uh, Book me a flight and I said, okay, fine. So she came down for two weeks. Now oh, you get your ice course. Yeah. Now you get your ice course. You get <laughs> like a punchy breedy or a tomato breedy. And now you feel it comfortable and you go into training and whatever's happening at training, you know, you're coming home and there's, there's, there's something there. Yeah. Because I, and then I realized after this, but okay, this was the problem. Yes. I was feeling like an outcast in my team. Yes. And then I was feeling like, and even at home, I was like, I, was, I would go to Gary, we would have maybe a supper together, and then yeah. after that I'll come home, and now you, you're looking at four ceilings, and yes. you have no place. Exactly. And so, basically, where I'm going with it is that um, Bloemfontein has, has given me the courage and the confidence, because then, again, so I'm competing with Ugandans, number one, yes. and Bloemfontein Celtics, number one. At, the mo at that time, it was Postneto Moni, and after 10 games, he got injured halfway through one game against Black Leopards, and um, we, were, we were down 1-0, and we won the game 2-1. So I continued playing, and, and he just never ever played again after that. And in that time was, uh, Bloemfontein had the best support base in the country for like 10 years running. Yeah, special uh, supporters. They had special supporters and that the old Cesar Mabodu. I mean, 
our, our sub, the subscribers or the viewers can actually go and Google. Even if you Google, you Google my name, the first thing that will pop up will be that penalties against black lepers. And then you'll see that atmosphere. So we literally fill that stadium of 13,000 week in and week out, whether we play Chiefs, whether we play Wits at the time, whether we play Ajax Cape Town yeah. at the time. So now I had a mountain to climb because wherever you go in Bloemfontein, Bloemfontein is small. So you go into a mall and everybody knows you. You walk, into, you walk in the street and everybody knows you. So now you lost the weekend <laughs> and they are busy swearing at you. And <laughs> but you don't have to necessarily understand Sutu. Yes, to, to know that it's... To know that what they are saying is they are, you know, they don't want you in the skulls. Mm -hmm. So it taught me, it taught me fight, it taught me courage, it taught yes. me resilience. And that is why I could continue and, and why I felt I, I had a little bit of a more successful career out of Cape Town than what most of our footballers from Cape Town have is because yeah. of Bloemfontein. And then, um, yeah, um, things didn't go too well uh, when we signed Patrick Tignim from the uh, Olympics. Um, I think it was the 2008 Olympics, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, sounds about um, right. Yeah, and then he came to sign for us because uh, we had a new coach at that time, which was uh, Mitch Davre. Yeah. And um, he was looking for a little bit more competition um, for myself and him. And um, I actually. I, I got injured for, for a long time, I think it was about two months. I think it was a sports hernia. And, um, and Patrick, obviously, yeah, he claimed the number one because he was doing really well um, at the time. And, um, yeah, and then I, I, I pushed for a loan move. To th that was, actually, that was 2009. Yeah, because the Olympics is every four years. Yes, yes. And so 2008 was the Olympics, yeah. Yeah, 2008, 2012, yeah, 2008, yeah. So after that Olympics, he came. And then um, myself and him were sharing for that season, 2008 and 2009 season. And then 2009, I got injured again. Um, I think it was my shoulder. And I was out again for two months. And um, I knew that... Uh, in 2008, while I was doing well, I got a call up for Bafana. So I obviously wanted to keep that momentum going with getting a regular call up. So I needed regular game time. Yes. And I, um, I approached the club and asked for a loan move. And, and the move actually happened on the last day of, of transfer <laughs> in 2009 to Maritzburg. Um, and that's when I started working with, with Ernest Marindorp, um, my first stint with Ernest Marindorp. Yeah. And I was, yeah, I was playing quite regularly and I became a household name. Um, I think I've got, um, the, myself and Peter Peterson, we've got the most amount of um, matches um, under our belt uh, for Maritzburg. And yeah, we played there for five years. It was, it was tough because we were fighting a relegation yeah. a lot of the times. Um, and yeah, up until now, I think they, they, they still just survived yeah. on, the, on the last day of the season. So it's kind of up and down. Um, but yeah, it was um, then obviously made, made the World Cup squad. Um, yeah. like people are aware of, which is, was yeah. also um, quite a surprise because the three goalkeepers that went to um, to Brazil in that uh, the, the, the pre World Cup camp was Emil yeah. Bahar, uh, Munib Josephs, and Itumal and um, unfortunately, Emil got injured um, in Brazil and yeah. I, I got a call up. So, yeah, that was also one of my questions was, was you were part of that 2010 World Cup squad. Um, tell us, I've got two questions regarding that. How was it like the atmosphere being around the squad for the World Cup? And then my second question um, is, for I think the second game, Kune got a red card, if I'm not mistaken, and that meant that uh, Munib Josephs would play in the the final game against France. But how was it for you? Because now all of a sudden, if anything happens to Munib Josephs, you're in the team. So how was it for, for you um, around that time? 
And then when Nip still goes and, and and I don't know if somebody still has that game, they will be able they will actually watch it. I think it was the 60th minute, 65th minute, and I then he was holding something like he's injured, and I and I knew he was probably trying to pull my leg and make it <laughs> because we had we had this, and you know he's a choky guy, and yeah. and, I, and he could probably see how uh, anxious I was in, in the warm up because obviously Cunha wasn't there. Uh, yes, it was just myself and him, and. Uh, you could probably see that, you know, I was as anxious as I would be if I were to actually play the game. Yes. Uh, but he, he also had a bit of nerves. And then, I, I don't know, maybe maybe he was feeling sorry for me there on the sidelines. and think, oh, you know what, we're 3-0 up or 3-1 up. Let me give him the last 20 minutes yes. and have, <laughs> I don't know, fake an injury or something. But yeah, something happened at that time where, uh, yeah, it was... So, before the game, yeah, it was, it was nerve-wracking, but also... It was that anxiousness that keeps you on your toes, which, yeah. which keeps you alert. Um, up until now, I still get, get goosebumps when, when, when I watch the first goal because coincidentally, myself and um, Yeye Leselwani, um, yes, the yes. excuse player, uh, we were on a coaching course together um, and we did a topic called Laws of the Game and they actually showed that goal uh, <laughs> No, sorry, I lied. It was actually in the football theory that one of the clips was that first goal, mm-hmm. and he was part of that goal. Mm-hmm. And uh, like now, it's all these goosebumps when, when you think about it. You know, Shabalala uh, scoring, yeah. that goal, um, how electrifying the. I, I mean, even before that, we left the hotel and there was a fan park like a hundred, two, three hundred meters uh, away, and we driving past it, and you could see the people were there. And, could really get that, you know, that that feeling that it's there and then singing your national anthem. Um, it's the first World Cup game on African soil. Uh, you know, all those emotions go. It's just, it's just electrifying. You have 75, 80,000 supporters. Uh, majority, 90% of them were South African. And it was it was just unbelievable. Just something that I would be... Um, be able to tell my grandkids hopefully one day um, about and still remember it like it was yesterday. I think you also currently hold the record for receiving the most call-ups to the national team without playing. How does how does that that record hold with you? Is it something you're proud of or is it something that you, you regret not actually having been chosen to play given that you, you got so close so many times? Yeah, you know, the, you know for me it was Maybe it's because I'm I'm a guy that that always looks look at the positives. There was certain times that I felt a little bit disappointed um, not playing. Like even as recently as uh, 2017, when I got a call up um, as a 35 year old, 36 year old. And at that time, uh, we played two friendlies. I can't even remember what was against, but I remember that it was in Durban and East and East London. And uh, I was promised, you know, by the technical team at that time, you know, you're going to play the second game. Uh, uh-huh. okay. And second game came and I did it. And yeah, there was, there was a disappointment. But uh, I also look at, it's just, a, it's just an achievement on its own um, being recognized. Yes. And that is what everybody wants. Yes, everybody wants to represent the country. But you also do represent your country just being there and being yes. part. You have a role, you have a supportive role. Um, you need to support whoever's playing ahead of you. Um, you have to have the right attitude. And for me, is that was it's, it's the same thing. Like people ask me, so you were nominated two years in a row for goalkeeper of the season. You also never won it, but it's an achievement on its own. Yeah. Just to be there, um, getting it is the cherry on top. But just to be recognised mm-hmm. for your hard work and your accolades that you have gotten throughout that season. It's good enough for me. That's what I always tell people. And um, I probably took it the same way. Uh, yes, it would have been lovely and it would have been a different feeling to, to be on the field. Um, but I was I was obviously wasn't fortunate enough to it. But you have to, I look at, at the positives. <laughs> and and I remember now you were, you were saying that it was those three clubs, but I think I think what what made Cape Town City such a phenomenal years was actually the, the season before that, was with Pumalanga Black Aces. Aces, uh, yes. 
And they had a great season. I had a brilliant season, and I mean, yeah. I was competing with a, uh, a regular Bafana at that time, uh, Jackson Mabuhwani. Mm-hmm. He was a regular in Bafana, and I mean, he got a red card. I think it was the third game. And when I started playing, I just uh, I never gave it up. I, I think I played about 24, 25 yeah. games that season. So that was probably my best season um, as as an individual. Yeah. And then the season after that was as a team when we... Well, we ended off with aces. We actually ended off joint third, but we our goal difference was the same. Our points was the same. They just had more goals for. So that's how they got into CAF. I think uh, Platinum Stars was... Yeah, was yeah I think it was... Third. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then, and then with... Um, with City was our highest, was my highest ever finish of third uh, with Eric Tinkler. And then we went to, I think we played Champions League and we won the Telkom Cup. So as, as, a, as, a, as a team, City was, was the best the first year. And then as an individual, my best season was with Aces. Definitely. Um, so just, you touched on it there, but how was your, your, your experience playing for Cape Town City, seeing that you are a Cape Town boy? Um, how is it playing for Cape Town City? I, I mean, I'm also asking the question because I, I do have an affinity with the Cape Town team. So um, tell us what it's like, Cape Town City as a football club. Um, they seem to be very professional, very well run. Tell us what it was like for you as a player. Well, when I heard that Aces was sold, I was devastated because I was like, oh crap, there goes your plan out of the window. So my plan was to relocate to Johannesburg hopefully get about four, three or four years worth, uh, worth black aces, um, start getting into uh, analyst work at SAPC or Supersport, um, grow your goalkeeping academy because this is, uh, there's, a, there's a bigger demographic in Johannesburg to build yeah. awareness. Um, start your coaching courses, um, getting your coaching badges, um, trying to, you know, get onto the database of, you know, the SAFA, maybe into one of the um, junior national teams as the goalkeeper coach. And then you just get blown with this one. I you relocating back to Cape Town. And I, if I wanted to, I would have just called Alexi Estafio or Ari Estafio and asked me, can I come to my Cape Town? Um, so, yeah, initially it, was, it wasn't really in my plans, but, yeah, you know, um, we, got, we can always set out goals and plans, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's the almighty that, that controls Definitely. where we go. So, yeah, I just, just, just decided to, to, um, to make the most of it. And then a, a, another step came when uh, I heard that Mushin Etrigal is going to Pirates and he's not even going to be our coach anymore. Yeah. So now I'm saying, okay, <laughs> we literally 14 players that they kept or that decided to relocate and that the club wanted to keep and we said there was no coach. So it's sitting in John's office, John Kamitis, and obviously I was one of the more senior play- senior players um, at the time and he said, you know what, we Mushin is not coming. And, uh, but I could see I could see in his face like you know he's kinda happy that it wasn't Mushin because Mushin is a very demanding character. Yes. And <laughs> Um, and then they said, well, we have got a few options. I said, okay, yeah, well, um, you know, good luck with that decision on <laughs> final coach. And, um, yeah, Eric, Eric's name was there and, you know, they, they unveiled him as, as, as the, as the head coach. And the first year was, it was tough, but I think because we had a good core, um, and we had a good spine and we had a good understanding of the game and the individuals that we had um we could build around that i mean we had at that time it was it was myself as, as the goalkeeper uh, uh, we had Lebohang Manyama, uh, we had Aubrey and Goma which is back there now mm-hmm. we had just Mosia um so yeah it was just also just about you know getting some 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 fresh fresh faces there but we, we, we had a, a way of playing. And um, I think Eric will even up today say that he was, he was quite lucky with what he inherited um, from, because there was still a lot of, of uh, Black Aces football that was, that was yeah. being played. 
and um, for the, at least the first three or four months. So uh, I think that um, obviously set the tone quite quite good for 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 that season with us obviously winning winning the Telcom Cup. So you, <clears throat> I read somewhere that you are interested, or you were um, interested in buying a club. Um, what is your how how did that uh, go about, and what is your current situation with regards to that? Okay, so yeah, um, so last year I was um, I was contacted by uh, I, I, a mutual friend introduced uh, this this uh, he, he was an agent before, but. Um, and then he told me, okay, look, uh, uh, he, he feels that I could, I could be, could help him, and how could we, you know, come about and 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 uh, have a structure in a team. And then I said, okay, look, um, let's try and find a a Mutsepe team, and um, from there is what I feel that we can do, um, or how we can uh, meet your objective. Um, and then he said, okay, fine. Um, so how are we looking at funds and this and that? And I said, okay, look, we can't find a club at this fine. Um, so let's look at it as a partnership. And then he said, yeah, okay. So I did a bit of research and then, um, so we were looking at a Motsepe club, but to give players an opportunity, um, because also, you know, he's, he's Ghanaian, um, he's got a lot of contacts in Ghana, so we were thinking of our foreign players would probably be youngsters from Ghana, but mm -hmm. also um, have a look at the local talent that gives them opportunities. Yeah. And then um, with regards to, to COVID and, and the league and the way the league was, was going to be run, uh, where they were going to be split into two streams and you're only going to play 16 games. We decided, you know what, let's, let's, let's try again, maybe this season. Okay. And um, in the course of, of the pandemic and the way the league was run, we, we also found out that we could do, uh, we can go a different way. Okay. So, um, yeah, but... Now, unfortunately, is I'm I'm already part of a setup that is um, it's quite quite remarkable to a certain degree, if I should say so myself. And I think um, it's somewhere that I want to stay for um, at least you know uh, at least for for the forecoming future with regards to what I'm learning. This I get to learn the administration. For example, if I were to go and do this whole um, Motsepe or whatever club is. I'm going yes. to run the club. I'm part of the coaching. I'm going to be the admin part. Yes. So I'm going to be learn. I'm, I'm, I won't be able to learn. So I'm just going to yes. be thrown in the deep end, deep end yes. which is also, it's, it's not a bad thing. But I mean, with the club that I'm at now, or the, or the academy that I'm at now is that um, I, I see good potential, but I also get to, to learn. And um, I, I feel that when you're a player, you always think that you're going to be a good coach. But when you become a coach and when you start doing coaching badges, you actually learn a different side of it. And that's what I like now. Is I like the learning. I like the valuable experience that I'm giving. Um, and I feel that I want to continue with this going forward. Okay. So, yeah, just so you mentioned that now, just as, as the last point from my side, um, you've got the, the coaching badges and the, the goalkeeping academy. What else is next for, for Shoei Baltes? That's a lot. Uh, that's <laughs> a thing. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I, I will wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I'll think, okay, what am I, what next, what this? I will go to bed and I'm thinking, what this and this? Um, like my playing career, I, when I relocated to Johannesburg in 2019, um, September, because I, I I got offered to go, go on trial year or don't you want to play here? But I just lost the passion for playing and I already started enjoying coaching because I, yeah. I, I started actually with, with Ronda Bosch boys as they were their goalkeepers, the high school, um, in 2016. Um, and then I did an SAP team in Edelfeld called Goal 50. And I could see that, you know, this is where my passion is. Uh, to answer your question, when I, when I moved here, uh, 2019 in September, um, I, I came to work with uh, Stars of Africa, which is Farouk Khan's um, soccer academy, and he's renowned for, for sending players um, to, to, to Yeah, 
the likes of May Maclango, the new, uh, the latest now is Luther Singh in Portugal. So, um, and then I went to assist his, his, yeah, his goalkeepers. And, but I set myself goals that time and I said, okay, um, again, we're going to fast forward from 2016 when you had these goals and we're going to do it now. Okay. You're going to have your own academy in Johannesburg. You're going to push to get uh, as a football analyst because you really, I, I, I used to tell myself, and people told me I'm good at it. Hmm. Um, and you're on SABC now, currently. Uh, yeah, so Alhamdulillah, I'm on this. <laughs> After, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure if the director of SABC must watch this, which I'm going to actually tell him to his name is Joe Hitler. <laughs> Um, I, I met, so yeah, that was 2019 September from January. I messaged him. He said, there's nothing. I emailed him. He said, there's nothing. I called him. He said, there's nothing. Then it was COVID. Poof. No football, no nothing. Yes. No sport. Now I'm sitting in Johannesburg, unemployed. I'm asking myself, okay, what? And then luckily I still had um, some goalkeepers that uh, I was working with. And, and from June last year, we could um, we, we could do one-on-one -on -one sessions. I used to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with, with quite of the goalkeepers. I just wanted to keep fit. There was no football. And it's freezing here. And July came and the season was about to resume. And I'm, and I'm contacting Supersport. Um, and they say, no, there's nothing. And I said, okay. And, and I said, but what about like for the new season? They said, no, there's nothing for like 2020 season, 2021 season. I'm like, okay, no problem. And I go back to SAPC and, I'm, and I call, and then there's another guy I'm calling and then another guy, and then I'm trying this journey to get me in. And, and I'm per persistent. And then I meet up with a, a guy called uh, Simpiwi, and they've got also a podcast and a YouTube channel, and, and they actually were on um, the Sowetan TV. It's called Front Runner Sports, so they've got this Monday night football. On, um, and I, we started off with podcasts and uh, talking about games, talking about PSL wrap-ups, even talking about some international games or uh, Premier League. And... Yeah, and then I was on Sowetan TV on Monday, on Monday night football, and... Um, and then I get this, this and, and then I've given up now, SAPs I've given <laughs> up. And then I was just busy training, the, uh, and then they, came, they, they gave me a call and they said, okay, uh, you can come in for an audition. I'm like, okay, cool, shot. This was November last year, and I said, okay. And I asked, what game are we doing? And they said, no, we're doing the FA Cup Women's Final. But it was played already, but it's literally like, there's no replay. You can go Google, you can go try and live stream. There's oh, nothing. Yes. And I said, okay, fine. So they said, okay, you're coming in middle of November. And um, I go in and they say, oh, no. Okay. I don't know. I just know who the goal scorers are. I go and I'm, I'm Googling the, the lineup and uh, the history of the players and, you know, where they come from, and if Americans, and this and that, and um, they pass teams and all this. I'm doing all my research and going, I'm doing my audition, and I'm like, okay, uh, but I'm nervous because I'm coming from, I mean, you can tell me PSL players, now I can tell you PSL players, I can tell you the history, I can tell yes. you they play, I can tell you their names, their nicknames, all those things, and how you going, and I have to go, and you have to look down, okay, the name, the number, because you have to look at the number, and then the yes. name, okay, and, okay, it went very well, and then, it's, and then I'm trying to get information from from the people on the inside, like what's happening? And they say, okay, uh, they probably want you for, for the women's Premier League. I say, okay, but that's starting in December. That's good. <laughs> and December comes, nobody's calling me. And December passed, and I see already there's a panel of analysts, and I'm like, damn, didn't I make it again? <laughs> and January, the whole of January, I'm back on show, like what's happening? I even asked him, so I asked him the one day, so what can I do to, you know, to, to, to better my chances, like enhance my chances? Must I go into more of this or more research or work on my, my how do I speak? And he said, no, just stop annoying me. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 sorry, I lied. I said, no, no, what you can do is just stop putting pressure on us. 
And I think he asked, and I said, oh, I remember this. I was, I was contacting this person, and this was that person, this was that person. And, yeah. and yeah, but look, the persistence came through, and, and uh, I was given an opportunity, and now I've you know, got a contract. So I can kind of tell people that persistence <laughs> is key. <laughs> Sometimes even, <laughs> even annoy them uh, as much as you think it might not be annoying to them at ease. Um, yeah, so, but, okay, in a nutshell, I can tick that off. I can tick off that I've got my own academy. I can tick off that I wanted to be part of a setup that I feel that I can add value to and um, be part of. And that's where, where BSI comes in, the BSI Academy. Um, it's a football academy. Uh, it's run by, um, everybody will know, Zeka Marx. Yes. yes. He, yeah, he's, he, he was a uh, Morocco Swallows' PSL coach. Um, and Santos as well, Black Leopards. He had a stint at Black Leopards. So he's our football director. Uh, we've, we've just recently um, signed a multi-year lease with Mordefontein Sports Club, where we've got two massive fields, two five-a-side courts, a goalkeeping area, um, a lovely complex where we're going to have uh, classrooms. So basically the kids do um, online classes through Cambridge Institute, which is international. Uh, we'll have a canteen. There's going to be a lounge at the bottom. So this is going to be a gym. So you, your parents drop you off at 8 o'clock in the morning, into conditioning in the morning, into school in the afternoon on the field. So something that, you know, something different. So, yeah, like I said, um, Alhamdulillah, my persistence and, <laughs> and to certain people annoying uh, as, as you know, as pulled off. But I've, I've always had it even, even as a player. Um, I've set goals, short-term goals. I want to keep this amount of clean sheets or play this amount of games. I want a Bafana call-up. Um, I want to be part of the World Cup. Poof. Um, I want to do this. I want to do that. And, Fortunately, through through football and, and you know through the grace that uh, everything materialized, whatever, whatever. And whenever there were setbacks, uh, the setbacks wasn't wasn't something that I couldn't handle. Sure, but I just want to say um, a big shukran to you, a big thank you for for your time. I know that we had um, scheduling issues. We we had uh, an interview lined up and then it got postponed and then it got lined up and it got postponed. So I just want to say thank you to you for, for making yourself available. I enjoyed this. Um, time went so quick. I think we, we said 20, 20 minutes. We ended up being almost 40 minutes. So, <laughs> so I just want to say thank you very much. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to tell you that you're gonna say 20 minutes. One question of one question of yours. My answer is gonna be 20 minutes. They used to call me talk a lot. Um, <laughs> because yeah, I, yeah, I'm uh, yeah. It's, for me, it's very enjoyable. Um, I think that it's good to 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 give other people a perspective of, of what you've gone through, and also maybe maybe one or two can actually inspire as well. Exactly. So thank you guys. If you are watching, don't forget to subscribe. But um, until next time, thank you so much. Thank you again, Shoaib. Have fun, man.